What's up, Wizards? Welcome to MTG Alchemy. I'm your host, Koi Cook. And I'm Billy. Before we get started, make sure you hit the subscribe button and ring that bell so you never miss an episode of MTG Alchemy. We want to shout out to all of our patrons. We appreciate all of you out there. If you guys want to be a patron, gain access to exclusive content and rewards by signing up on patreon.com slash MTG Alchemy. Also, we want to invite all of you to join in on the conversation on Discord, so follow the link below right, right now. now. <laughs> we have two giveaways going on as well, so follow those links below in the description for details on the giveaways. Absolutely. For our local MTG Alchemy community, we want to announce our first LGS sponsor right here in town in Rogers, Gamers Utopia. Go check them out on Facebook or in person for all of your Magic the Gathering needs. Be on the lookout for exclusive offers from Gamers Utopia by becoming a patron. Now it's time to see who's going to be victorious in episode two. Let's, Let's go, go to war. war. What's up, Wizards? It's Koi, and today I'm playing with Kaneos and Tyro of Melitus. At the beginning of your instep, draw a card. Each player may put a land card from his or her hand onto the battlefield. Then each opponent who didn't draws a card. Hey guys, my name is Cody. Today I'm playing with Aloro, Ageless Ascetic. At the beginning of my upkeep, if Aloro is in the command zone, I gain two life. Whenever he's onto the battlefield, if I gain life, I may pay one colorless. And if I do, I get to draw a card and each opponent loses one life. My name's Brandon, and today my commander is Hapatra, Vizier of Poisons. Uh, she is a two drop, one black, one green, legendary creature, human cleric. Whenever Hapatra, Vizier of Poisons, deals combat damage to a player, you may put a neg one, neg one counter on target creature. Whenever you put one or more neg one, neg one counters on a creature, create a one, one green snake creature token with death touch. I'm CJ and today I'm playing Aminatu, the Fate Shifter. With Aminatu, I can plus one to draw a card and put a card from my hand on top of my library. Minus one, exile another target permanent you own, then return it to the battlefield under your control. Neg six, choose left or right. Each player gains control of all non-land permanents other than Aminatu, the Fate Shifter, controlled by the person of the chosen direction. Fight! All right, <laughs> game upkeep. I will gain two life if my commander is in the command zone. Untap, upkeep draw and then I will play a reliquary tower I have no maximum hand size I'm going to tap one and play my soul ring oh you're that guy it seems like there's always a player in any game that drops a land into a soul ring and I usually end up hating those people that'll be my turn CJ okay draw <clears throat> I will play a submerged boneyard tapped and pass the turn to you Koi alrighty I will draw I will play a uh, Wooded Foothills. I'm gonna crack it, pay a life. I'm gonna get Stomping Grounds, and I'm going to pass turn. All right, I will play an Evolving Wilds hey. and crack it. Crack okay. it. I'll just follow up Koi on the search here, and I will pass turn. Beginning of my upkeep, I will gain two life. Again, that's draw for turn. turn. I will play a Glacial Fortress, it comes in tapped, and then I will tap Reliquary Tower and Soul Ring to play a Chromatic Lantern. Wow. Lands I control have tap, add one mana of any color, and I can tap it, add one mana, mana of any color. Cool. And then that will be my turn. Okay. I will untap and draw, and then I will play a... Palomar Depths tapped. Whenever it enters the battlefield, I can look at the top three cards of my library and put them back in any order. And we will go like that and pass the turn to you, Koi. Alrighty. Untap, draw. I'm going to play Sea of Clouds. It enters the battlefield untapped because I have two or more opponents. Hey! It's pretty cool. One of the lands from Battle Bond. Yep. And I will pass my turn. Alright. Untap, upkeep, draw. Uh, I will play a Swamp, I will tap both of my lands for Ring of Colonia, it's a two drop artifact equipment, uh, equipped creature has Trample, at the beginning of your upkeep put a plus one plus one counter on equipped creature if it's green and it's equip cost is only one. Hey. I will pass my turn to Cody. Alright. 
untap. That is upside down. That ain't gonna work. <laughs> Exert. <laughs> Exert, tap my land. Exert, <laughs> tap land. three right. mana. Begin him up, keep. Gain oh two life. Gain two, two life. Hmm. 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 I'm gonna play Orzhov Basilica. It enters tapped. Uh, whenever it enters the battlefield, return a land I control to my hand. I'll return Glacier Fortress. Pass my turn. All right, I will untap and draw. And I will play a Plains. And then I'm going to tap the Halimar Depths for a Sensei's Dividing Top. I know that CJ is playing with Aminatu. Immediately off the bat, he goes to play a Sensei's Divining Top. And that is a that is a staple in most Commander's decks. And I know that once that is on the field, I mean, he, he's going to start powering through his deck. With Sensei's Divining response, Top. Uh-oh. And I'm actually going to disallow that. Uh, Counter target spell, activated ability, trigger ability. I'm going to tar target the spell. Okay. Wow. <laughs> That's uh, the biggest waste of a disallow that I think I've ever seen. <laughs> All right. I, I guess that's it. Past turn. All right. Go. Okay. So I'm going to tap two and play Nature's Lore. Nature's Lore is a two drop sorcery. Search your library for a forest card. Put that card into play, then shuffle your library afterwards. And I will pass turn. All right. Untap. I'll play a forest. I will. Tap three and put out my own chromatic lantern. I've got my own chromatic lantern. I'm excited to have a little bit of mana to play with, but Patra's coming out next turn. Pass turn to Cody. Okay. Untap. Gain my two. Draw. And I will play a Glacier Fortress. It enters tapped. I don't have a whole lot that I can do right now, but I do have one really cool card in my hand. It's called Bribery. It's a five drop sorcery. Search target opponent's library for a creature card and put that card into play under my control. That player then shuffles his or her library. I'm going to choose Koi. Out of nowhere, Cody wants to go get a creature out of my deck. That's very, very bad. I'm gonna choose Avison. Oh, come on. Of course. Angel of Hope. Yeah. Um, it's an 8-8 eight, eight with Flying, Vigilance, Indestructible, and other permanents I control have Indestructible. And he chooses Avison. Awesome. Here come the next. Doo, doo, doo. Oh, please take that out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then that will end my turn. All right, so I'm gonna untap. Okay. And draw. I uh, will play a Forge of Heroes, and then I will tap a black, a white, and a blue for Aminatu the Fate Shifter. Okay, in response, I'm gonna tap Exotic Orchard uh, for a white, since you have a Plains, and I'm gonna pad the Exile Avacyn. He's gonna exile his own Avacyn, I love oh it. If I can't have it, neither can you. <laughs> Perfect, <laughs> wow. <laughs> then I will tap the Forge of Heroes to add a counter to Aminatu. I will then plus one Aminatu to draw a card. And I will put a card back on top of my library. I'll pass the turn to you, Koi. All right. Five loyalty counters already. I'm gonna untap and draw. And then I am going to play an island. And then I'm gonna play my commander. So one blue, tap Exotic Orchard for white, and green and red to play my commander. And then I will declare the end of my turn and the beginning of my end step. Each uh, player can either draw a card or play a land. I get to do both. I'll draw. I will play Arcane Sanctum. Hmm. And I will play a forest. All right, pass turn to Brandon. All right, on tap. Draw. I will play a swamp. I will tap two. Four of Patra. Busy with poisons. Okay. Uh oh. I will tap one. To equip Ring of Colonia. Uh, 
I will pass my turn to Cody. Okay. Again, I'm going to keep I'll getting to draw. Tap three. You play a pristine talisman. I it's can, pristine. I can tap it and add one colors to my mana pool, and then, and then I will gain one life. That will end my turn. Okay. Wow. Untap and draw. I will play a command tower. Then I will plus one Aminatu to draw a card. And I'll put a card back. And then I will play a spell book. So I have no maximum hand size. Um, tap a black and a black and three colorless for Liliana Vess. <laughs> Yeah, that happens. Okay. Yeah, that's a I will minus two Liliana, bring her from a five to a three, and I'm going to search my library for a card, shuffle it, and then put that card on top of it. So I use Aminatu's first ability, and I pull a Liliana vest from it. So I don't want to put that back on top of my library. Uh, so I'm just going to put a card at random on top. Liliana Vest is going to help me out tremendously because I can just use her neg ability instantly and go and get a card that I could actually use right now. And I will pass the turn to you, Corey. All right. I need to draw into some more mana, so I'm going to play Rites of Flourishing here and just see if it can help me start getting some more mana in my hand. Three. I'm going to tap Exotic Orchard for white, I guess. Okay. And then I'm going to play Rites of Flourishing. Uh, at the beginning of each player's draw step, the player draws an additional card. Each player may play an additional land on each of his or her turns. Yo! Nice. Thanks, man. Yeah. I'm into this. Buddy deck. Yeah. I'm just, I'm a little Not salty you. at you. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it's uh, any consolation, uh, I'm really glad I got rid of Avison. I guess. I'm, I not, I'm not too happy with you either. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to declare the end of my turn and I'm going to draw. I'm I will dead. draw on so I'll draw. I'll draw. Now that I think about it, after I just passed my turn, somebody should probably swing an Amanatu. Upkeep? <laughs> Why? And and give draw? someone a Liliana? Nope. I'll play a Swamp. Mana per turn. I will play... Necropede for two. Necropede. Uh, an artifact creature. It's an insect with Infect. And when Necropede is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you may put a Neg 1, Neg 1 counter on a target creature. Four mana left. Let's tap it all. I have no response to anything, right? That sounds safe. Four. For Wickerbow Elder. Uh, creature, Tree Folk Shaman. Uh, Wickerbow Elder enters the battlefield with a Neg 1, Neg 1 counter on it. And I can tap one green to remove a Neg 1, Neg 1 counter from Wickerbow Elder to destroy target artifact or enchantment. Uh, now, because I put out a Neg 1, a Patra will trigger. I will create a 1-1 one, one green snake creature token with death touch. This is getting bad. So that's really bad. Uh, I have a lot of artifacts and enchantments in my deck. I can't let this stay on the field. So, let's just signify there's one of those. Anything now, I can do to help, you just let me know. I absolutely will. Now, Hypatra gets a plus one, plus one counter because she is green from Ring of Colonia for every turn that it is equipped. All right. So, we'll put that at the top of her card. I'll enter combat, mm -hmm. and I'm definitely going to swing at Aminatu for three with Hepatra. Mm -hmm. I will I, you know, <laughs> pass good. turn to Cody. Before the end of your turn, Ooh. I'm going to tap a, this for a white and a black, and then I'll tap this for colorless and I'll gain one life from tapping it, and I'm going to Anguished Unmaking your Wicker Bow Elder. Excellent wow. target non-land permanent, and I'll lose three life. Can't blame you. <clears throat> Boom. <laughs> Beginning of upkeep, I'll gain two life, and then I will draw for my turn, and then I will draw an extra card. From Rites of Flourishing. From Rites of Flourishing, yes. And I will play a Warhol Refuge. Um, 
enters the battlefield tapped, and whenever it enters the battlefield, I will gain one life. And then I will tap Orzov Basilica Sweet. for a white and a black, and a Christine Talisman for a colorless, and whenever I tap it, I will gain a life, and I will play a Karmic Justice, uh, an enchantment. Whenever I spell or ability an opponent controls, destroys a non-creature permanent I control, I may destroy target permanent that opponent controls. <gasps> Yeah, that's really bad. Well, that's going to be the first thing we destroy. And then I will destroy something in return. Yeah. That's the only thing, though. <laughs> yep. I'm, yeah. Yeah. Ooh. It's a really good card. All right. I hate you. And then I will... <laughs> that has to be me. And then I will end my turn. Okay. So I will untap and... Draw a card and then draw an additional card. So I keep top decking into Planeswalkers. I don't really need to be a target, but if it's gonna help me get lands that I need, I gotta take it. So I will tap four for Liliana the Dark Realms. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so three Planeswalkers. Three. And I will plus one this Liliana and I will search for a Swamp card. What is this, Super Friends? What is this deck? Cody, this is your fault. Reveal it and then put it into my hand. <laughs> it's your fault because you took my Avacyn. And he took my top. It has nothing to Here's do with Here's my swamp. He doesn't right. even need your buddy deck. The swamp will go into buddies. my hand and then <laughs> yes. I will play a land per turn. And yeah, I will play the swamp. And then I will minus two this Liliana and I will search my library for a card. Put it on oh my top. God. I'll take the one that was already on the top. Uh, That's actually hilarious. What is his draw luck right now? I don't know. Over, definitely over 9,000. I was thinking the same thing. All right. And then my card from Liliana Vest will go on top. I will then plus one Aminatu and draw a card and put a card back. And then I will tap one and play a soul ring. And pass it. Right, untap and draw. And then drop an additional play land. I think I'm just gonna move to end step and I will draw. Everyone draws. Draw. And I will draw. Draw? I will discard rings of power. Ooh. Go ahead, Brandon. Untap. Enter upkeep. Papatra will gain a plus one plus one from Ring of Colonia. I will draw two. I will tap four for a Noxious Hatchling. Noxious Hatchling comes into play with four neg one neg one counters on it. Ooh, four drop six six. It deals damage in the form of Wither. Whenever I play a black spell, remove a neg one neg one counter from Noxious Hatchling. And whenever I play a green spell, remove a neg one neg one counter from Noxious Hatchling. Uh, because I put out a neg one neg one, uh, Hepatra will create one 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 green snake with death touch. I will swing one at Liliana Vess and four at Aminatu. Okay. Pass turn to Cody. That's okay, Brandon. I got something for you. Untap. Getting my keep on game two life. Draw per turn and then draw an extra card. Uh, <laughs> I know I've got a small target on my back because of some plays I made earlier. Let's go ahead and see if I can get that target off my back. I'm gonna just gonna play pull tomorrow. Oh. Draw X cards and then I will have to discard a card. Cody's trying to draw cards. Oh, Cody. You remember how you countered my top? Let's see how you like this. Okay, in response. I'm going to tap my command tower for a blue, Halimar Depths and the Soul Ring and Devious Cover Up. Counter target spell, if that spell is countered this way, exile it instead of putting it into its owner's graveyard, and then I may shuffle up to four cards from my graveyard into my library. All right, wow. Um, oh no! It's like, I'm going to respond to yours. Okay. I am going to play Insidious Will. I'm going to copy target instant or sorcery, and you may choose new targets for the copy. Okay. So now I'm going to draw. 
And you right. and you paid how much for X? Seven. 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 Yeah. So you'll draw seven cards and discard a card. I had a feeling that CJ was going to counter my spell just in spite. Uh, I did not expect Corey to copy it though to make him draw cards. That's not good. Yeah. Oh my god. Three, four. And then that one will happen. This one will exile. Wow. And Devious cover up will go there, and I will shuffle Liliana Vess and my Sensei's Divining Top back <laughs> and into will, my library. I will discard Mystic Monastery. Right. And then that will end my turn. Untap, draw two. I will plus one Liliana Dark Realms. Go and search for a swamp. I will play a Swamp and a Plains, because I can play two off of Rites of Flourishing. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'll tap one black and ten for X to cast Killing Wave. For each creature, its controller sacrifices it unless he or she pays X life, where X is ten. Wow. Um, I have no creatures, so it has no effect on me. Koi, do you want to pay the ten life or get rid of your oh, commander? Yeah, I'll sack my commander. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and Brandon? I, I, I'm not going to keep anything at that point. <laughs> yeah. That's, <coughs> that's too much life. It's a lot of life. Yeah, it is. And that will conclude my turn. Pass to you, Koi. I'm going <coughs> to untap and draw, and then draw an extra. Uh, I am going to play two lands per turn. I'm going to play Seaside Citadel, and I'm going to play Rootbound Crag. Ooh. I am going to tap for... Uh, Savala, Explorer Returned, it's a 2-4, uh, I can tap it, each player reveals the top card of his or her library, for each non-land card revealed this way, add one green to your mana pool, and you gain one life, then each player draws a card. Oh, huh. perfect. Um, That's cool. Let's see, and then Parlay. play Temple Bell. Temple Bell. Oh, yay. <laughs> awesome. Yep. Yeah. Uh, all I gotta do is tap it. Each player draws a card. It's perfect. Um, And then let's go ahead and tap it. Everybody draw a card. Hey. No, I'll God. draw a card. And then I will <coughs> declare the end of my turn. All right. Untap. Upkeep. Got nothing that happens on upkeep right now. Draw. And then draw an additional. Yeah, and then draw one. Accept my rights of flourishing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got Accept rights. It. You got rights. I got rights. For now. I will be playing a Harbinger of Night for four mana. It is a black two three with during your upkeep, put a neg one neg one counter on each creature. Wow. Awesome. Tap to play Serrated Arrows. It is an artifact. Uh, it comes into play with three arrowhead counters on it. When there are no arrowhead counters left on Serrated Arrows, I destroy it. Um, and I can tap Serrated Arrows to remove an arrowhead counter from Serrated Arrows uh, and put a Neg1 Neg1 oh. counter on target creature. Perfect. Pass my turn to Cody. Okay. Yeah. All right. Beginning of my upkeep, I'm gonna gain my two life. I'm gonna draw, for, and then draw an additional. I think he's gonna counter this one. I will play since it is divining top. <laughs> you get to keep yours, I guess. I guess. <laughs> so Cody gets a top, but CJ doesn't get one. <laughs> oh man, that's funny. <laughs> Come on, Coy, get one. rid of it. I can pay one, look at the top three three cards of my library and put them back in any order. I can tap it, draw a card, and put Sensei's Divine Top on top of its owner's library. Yeah, I and I will play a land per turn. Azorius Chantry enters the battlefield tapped. Mm -hmm. uh, whenever it enters the battlefield, returning land, I control to my hand. So I'll return a war off refuge. Here mm -hmm. and then I will play my second land per turn, War All Refuge, Energy Tapped, and I will gain one life. 
Uh, let's just throw this out there and see what happens. Defiant Bloodlord has flying, and whenever I gain life, target opponent loses that much life. It is a 4 5. Yo. I will end my turn. Okay. So, Cody playing Defiant Bloodlord is not a good thing because his deck so far is doing nothing but gaining him life. If he keeps gaining life, we're going to keep losing life, so I need to go and find an answer. Black and a black on the Soul Ring for Mastermind's acquisition. <clears throat> Mm. Mm -hmm. And I will choose to search my library for a card. So I go and grab Plague Crafter because it's going to force Cody to get rid of his creature and everybody else to get rid of pretty much every creature on board, considering everybody's only got one, so it's going to protect my last remaining Planeswalker. Plague Crafter? Yep. When it enters the battlefield, each player sacrifices a creature or a Planeswalker each player who cannot discards a card. <clears throat> so I will choose Playcrafter. Because every creature on the field. And it's gone. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> I know. And then I will plus one the Liana, and I will search for a swamp and put it into my hand. So nobody's got any creatures out, and I have one other Planeswalker in my hand. So Obnixilis of the Black Oath. What do you know? Another Planeswalker. Uh, I will do his plus two and put him at a five and each opponent will lose one life and then I will gain life equal to the life lost this way. So you gain three. And one, two, three. And then I will pass the turn to you, Koi. Oh, okay. Retap that temple bell real quick. <laughs> oh yeah, Let's I'm gonna go. draw, draw, <laughs> draw per turn, and then tap Temple Bell. Yes. Really draw. Hey, I'm gonna play a Forest. When I got to draw off of Cody's draw, I drew this. And then play expropriate. Oh. Um, it's got Council's Dilemma. Starting with go. you, each player votes for time or money. For each time vote, take an extra turn after this one. For each money vote, choose a permanent owned by the voter and gain control of it. Exile expropriate. I, so it's got to start with me, so I am going to vote time. Don't look at me. <coughs> money. Time. God. This is really bad. It's like two extra turns. It's don't, a dilemma. Don't give him an extra turn. He's already taken two. We'll go with money. Okay. Okay. Cody voted for time. That's perfect. I get two extra turns and I get to take two permanents. Nothing could be better for me right now. What are you taking from Brandon? Yeah. Um, I think I, I'm gonna take his Chromatic Lantern. Actually. Really? I already don't have enough mana. So why do you need my lantern? <laughs> and what are you there gonna you take go. of mine? The spell book would be good for you. I'll take care of Nixos. All right, so Koi took the Planeswalker I knew he would take because he doesn't have any swamps in his deck, so the Liliana's not going to help him at all. Um, but since he's got these extra two turns now, it's going to slow me down a lot. And then I will move to discard, and then I will begin my extra turn. All right, first play. Uh, my first turn. Uh, my first next turn. Draw two. And tap Temple Bell. And then... Tap Temple Bell. Yes. So we're ready hey. to draw. I will play Glacial Fortress. Mm -hmm. And then Neg 2. Yeah, so I'm going to Neg 2 of Nixilis. I'm going to get a 5-5 five, five Black Demon Creature Token with flying onto the battlefield. And then I lose 2 life. So this is a 5-5 five, five Demon. Um, then you will lose 2 life. And I lose 2 life. 
And then I will play, I will tap four, and I will play Leyline of Anticipation. If Leyline of Anticipation is in your opening hand, you may begin the game with it on the battlefield. Of course, that doesn't matter. Um, but you may cast non-land cards as though they had flash. He ain't gonna win on this turn. Mm -mm. And then four for Consecrated Sphinx. Hey. Whenever, whenever an opponent draws a card, you may draw two cards. Nice. All right, now, Consecrated Sphinx. Every time somebody wants to draw a card, I get to draw two. This is gonna set me up for one of my win conditions. I just hope I get to pull it off. Go to my next turn. All right. Tap then, Temple Bell. <laughs> and then I will draw two. And then tap Temple Bell. So I'm gonna draw for me. And then you I'm gonna draw, draw six. Two, four, six. Jeez. And then I will play an extra land per turn. I'm going to swing my 5-5 five, five demon at Lilian. Yeah. So we'll go down to a one. And then, let's see. I will tap my chromatic lantern and forest. My chromatic lantern. An island. Yeah, your chromatic lantern. <laughs> <laughs> For J Spellerin. Oh, buddy. Oh. Um, I'm going to plus two J Spellerin. Um, each player draws a card. So I'm going to draw a card, and then I'm going to draw six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I will neg two of Nixilis, and I will get another five, five. Demon. Hmm. So, get another five, five demon. And then... I will tap five. I will tap five and play Krufix, God of Horizons. I have no maximum hand size, um, and is if my devotion to green and blue is less than seven, Krufix is not a creature. It's a creature. You know. It is right yeah, now. Yeah, it is yeah. a creature now. Um, if unused mana would empty from your mana pool, that mana becomes colorless instead. So it It'll doesn't. It's a mana bank. Over. Yeah. Yeah. Oh boy. He's a mana bank. <clears throat> um, and nope. then I will end my final turn. Brandon, you can take a turn now. Boy. If you'd like. I actually get to play? <laughs> so I've got a couple cards that will allow me to proliferate uh, in my hand. I'm hoping this comes back around quickly so that I can start copying these neg one neg ones and get rid of Krufix at least. His hand's kind of building a little bit too much and I'd like to see him discard half of it. All right, untap, Let's see, upkeep, draw, and I'll draw a second, rights of flourishing. Mm -hmm. um, um, I'm gonna draw two, okay. um, actually I'm gonna draw four. Grim backwards. And would you believe that's the only land I have here? I think I'll tap four for Hepatra. Hey, hey, she's here. I will. Welcome back. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Welcome back. Tap one to equip Ring of Colonia. Please don't kill my Sphinx. Please don't kill my Sphinx. Three for a Splendid Agony. It's a black three drop instant that states distribute two neg one neg one counters among one or two target creatures. Uh, We'll put one each on Krufix and the Sphinx. Would oh. you work? Like some red counters? Yeah, that'll work. Okay. Uh, so that is going to generate two snakes. We'll just do a quick two. I'm going to remove an arrowhead counter from serrated arrows and tap to put a neg one counter on uh, let's do Krufix. Okay. And that will be a snake. <laughs> now, the fun thing is, I'm out of mana, so I have to move to discard, and I have quite a hand. Turn goes to Cody. Before the end of your turn, I'm going to tap this to activate the top and move the top. Oh, a chromatic lantern. 
Yeah, he used to have one of those. <laughs> Untap, beam him up, keep, I'll gain two life. And then I'll draw. And then draw. I will play a Evolving Wilds. I'm actually going to tap and sack it. Go search my library for a basic land. Pull out the island, it'll enter tapped. All right, and then I'll play my second land per turn. It'll be a Sunken Hollow. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and tutor. Uh, I don't really know what I'm looking for, but I need to find something to maybe stop all this craziness. We'll see what happens. Diabolic Tutor. Oh. Search my library for a card, then put that card in my hand, and then shuffle my library. And then, big moves. Big moves. That's, big moves, that's man. the end of my turn. Wow. On to you, CJ. I will go to untap, and I will draw per turn, then I'll draw off of yours. I'm gonna draw four. Alrighty, we will play a swamp. So I just drew a card that's gonna help me get rid of one of Koi's permanents. Um, let's see if that happens. Oh, yeah. For banishing stroke. Put target artifact, creature, or enchantment on the bottom of its owner's library. Um, There's only one thing CJ is trying to banishing stroke, and that's my ley line of anticipation. I'm out. To Fury's protection. Till your next turn, your life total can't change. You have protection from everything. All permanents you control phase out. Okay. Jeez. So it resolves. And I will... I will actually put your arrows on the bottom. I will then plus one Liliana of the Dark Realms. I will go and get a Swamp card. And then I will tap a blue for Sensei's Divining Top. <laughs> he got In it. response. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, <laughs> my God. Man. Okay. Bad joke, dude. You're going to give this guy PTSD. All right, so I get my Sensei's Divining Top back. This is perfect. Now all I need to do is get to my next turn and cast my commander, and I can get my engine going. And hopefully, it'll be unstoppable. To cast my commander, Aminatu. Now you can see why I... This countered his top. And yeah. then I will tap one to use the top, and I will look at the top three cards of my library and put them back in any order. We'll go with that. And then I will plus one Aminatu. <laughs> I almost forgot. I will draw a card. A card back. I will pass the turn to you for back in. And then I will draw twice because of that. And then I will play Command Tower. Hey, somebody told me that was a good card. Right? And, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I will play uh, Flooded Grove. I will tap a Temple Bell. So oh. I'm going to draw. I hear that ring. Draw one, two, three. Four, five. All right. So, in Magic, if you can't draw from your deck, you lose the game. Unless you have a Laboratory Maniac. Pay okay, two for Laboratory Maniac. Um, laboratory Maniac is a two-two. If you would draw a card while your library has no cards in it, you um. win the game instead. And then I will plus two J Speller. So, each player will draw a card, and then I will draw six. All right, assuming no one has a counter, I am going to attempt to draw 30 cards from my deck by tapping six mana. We'll see how it goes. And play Minds of Glow. Join forces, starting with you, each player may pay any amount of mana. Each player draws X cards, where X is the total amount of mana paid this way. Mm. So, starting with me, I will pay one, two, three, four, five. 
Um, everybody draws five cards. So one, two, three, four, five. And now we can draw 30. And then I'm going to draw 30. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, yep. eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, <coughs> fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Go to draw for twenty. And I win. cannot draw. Yep. Called it. He won. He won. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> he win. He win. He win. He win. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, where are they? Oh, there. There's no more. Oh, I guess I win. I finally got to win on the show. Of course, I guess it's only our second episode, so he win. Hey, I won. Yeah, congrats, man. Good yeah. job. Yeah. 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 He didn't beat me, so that's good. That's <clears throat> true. He definitely wasn't in the episode or wasn't on the on the game anyway. Um, what are you gonna do? But you know, I w so a couple of things in the, in the recap, I guess. Um, one thing that I wish I had done differently is I wish that I had plussed or, or negged Omnixilis as soon as I got him. Um, I, I just I think I was so caught up in the moment when I stole up Nixilis and I had two extra turns. I just didn't think about it. I didn't think about the fact that I could, you know, use one of his loyalty abilities immediately. So I just skipped it and I went on my next turn. And that's when I made the demon. And I shouldn't have done that. I should have I should have done it as, as soon as it came onto my side of the field. But yeah, but when you have two extra turns, it really didn't set you back that far. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, guess it didn't that's... set me back, but but it was yeah. a misplay. I yeah. wish, or, or not a misplay, I guess. It was just something that I should have done and didn't. But uh, but yeah, so I wish I'd have done that differently. Um, Cody, on the other hand, he, dude, he was throwing out all kinds of weird stuff, like bribery. I've never seen him play that card with that deck before. I'm going to be completely honest with all of you out there. I didn't know that card existed until Cody played it on the show. That makes two of us. Yeah, I, I had no idea bribery existed, so I'm really, really impressed uh, with, with the card itself um, and, and how he played it. He really went and got one of the best cards in my deck. Um, Probably one of the best cards in all four of the deck. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, well, he's got one in his deck. If you if right. you look up the, and, and I could have just as easily looked up his deck tech, on on our tapped out. Um, I don't know why I didn't, but I just I just didn't. Um, so I didn't know bribery was in there. But um, he has Avacyn in his deck too. So he could have he could have had two Avacyn. Well, no, she's legendary. Yeah, but, but she still could have killed yours. Right, she could have killed mine. But I, I exiled mine, which is ultimately better for yeah, Cody. Yeah, I mean but, that's. But anyways, you gotta uh, exile your own creature. That stinks. Right, and then CJ's top. Oh man, he could not get, dude. That was the. That's probably the best part of the whole episode is the fact that CJ couldn't get a top out. Oh, like, uh, yeah. <laughs> when that happened, I was just like, yeah. And then he finally got it. Wow. He finally got the top out at the at the very end. Yeah. But but man, that well, was that's great. The top so important to to know? his deck especially. The 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 top is. One of the key ingredients to his deck, he can power through his deck, go get answers. He can just he can flip through his deck to get uh, yeah. exact answers for what he needs. And if you let him get out of control, it, there's no stopping that deck because yeah. it it literally is a fate shifting deck. It's well, it's pretty I mean, nuts. He he uses Esper control basically with pinpoint accuracy when he has that top out there. Because right. <clears throat> I've played against all of these decks yeah, in as casual I, play, and also I saw still that, never seeing bribery. Yeah, still <laughs> never seen bribery. Yeah. Never. I, it, I don't even know. Just <laughs> mind blown kind of a situation. But to see his top get canceled like that, or disallowed, I guess. Oh man! I was just like, ooh, yeah. wow. <laughs> Question of the day. Which commanders or decks would you like to see in an upcoming episode of Wizard Wars? Let us know in the comments below. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We'll see you guys next time on MTG Alchemy.